still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. Earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Now to the truth frequency. Do it quick. R T F R. We're gonna do what you're talking to. Truth frequency radio. Oh, that's fine. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently at war with the mainstream scientific community. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is making his new spandex suit in preparation for his new role as the Human Torch. Now that mainstream science has announced going to space will permanently change your DNA by as much as 7%, at least it will help with all the DNA evidence from former crimes he might have committed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're not very good at the Internet. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not April 3rd, 2018, then this is a rerun, just to let you know. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery goes a little something like this. With genetic engineering, we will be able to increase the complexity of our DNA and improve the human race. But it will be a slow process because one will have to wait about 18 years to see the effect of changes to the genetic code. Who said that? The late Stephen Hawking. So you can see the peanut gallery is kind of on a genetic DNA thing because of the headlines. But maybe we'll get into that later. We'll see. Quick little announcements. The Toronto meetup is going to be April 30th. We still haven't uh, picked out the location yet, but we're getting recommendations. So uh, Patricia and I will probably kind of discuss that tomorrow. Maybe we'll come to a decision tomorrow on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And that starts at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern on her channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, otherwise known as F-E-O-H-P. The Canadian Flat Earth Conference, I made my first trailer for that. It's coming up in August 9th and 10th in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. International conference, could be lots of people there. You can go check it out at fe2018.com slash Canada. That's kind of fun. 
Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Challenge is in effect. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth against mainstream science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university, foreign or domestic, to debate or discuss the Flat Earth reality. The short version is this. You fly me in, take care of my hotel, and I'll face down any scientific body you put against me. My only debate requirement is that you have someone with a master's degree in a physical science either participating in or supervising the event. Accept this challenge and you will be treated with respect. If not, then you're just cowards hiding behind empty equations. Uh, tonight is going to be sort of a hybrid show. So we're going to do some call-ins. We're not going to take calls to the second hour, just so you know. Uh, the first hour, we are going to be talking to a guest. He is not one of our subject matter experts. He was just one of our normal guests that we had uh, back in 2015. But before I bring him on, and he'll have to unmute his microphone eventually. Don't get caught with the microphone muted. The We're going to rattle off the subject matter experts. Ready? Here we go. Deep breath. United States Navy Missile Instructor, United States Air Force Navigator, a Marine Corps Sniper Instructor, a Navy Submarine Chief, an Army Artillery Radar Operator, an Australian Intelligence Officer, an American Flight Instructor, an Industrial Engineer specializing in valves and seals, a Career Surveyor of 32 years, an International Shipping Expert, a Corporate Travel Agent, an Air Traffic Controller, United States Army Master Gunner, Aviation and Ground Training Combat Expert, USDA Surveyor of 27 years, 32nd Degree Mason, Etheric Science Researcher, Commercial Airline Captain, Commercial Airline Co-Pilot, Industrial Vacuum Expert, Merchant Marine, Army Air Traffic Controller, United States Navy Quartermaster, and a Navy Cryptological Technician. And if you don't know what that is, it used to be called Electronic Warfare, kind of like Battle Fatigue which became post-traumatic stress disorder, initially started out as shell shock. I stole that from George Car Carlin. Uh, so, yeah, we're uh, the guy we're going to talk to is Trevor Purvis. And if you guys uh, have been following me long enough, you will know we have not had him on the show since, what, 2015? Uh, probably at least that. It's been, I think it was, what, Strange World... Three, five, seven, <laughs> no, nine. I was, I don't, I, it was yeah, it was really in the low digits. You you helped yeah. me actually co-host some stuff. In fact, you were on a show with me and Jaron back in the day. You and Jaron, you and Jonathan did a or you I you Jonathan and I did a couple. Yep. You and I did a couple. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been wow, yeah. it's been a long time and it's it's amazing where this has gone, huh? I know, right? <laughs> uh in fact I'm gonna read an article here in a little bit. Uh, and I, I want your opinion on it, but anyone that doesn't know, again, if you've been following the show for as long, again, this, this you coming on kind of makes me feel like a real show now because you know how like in talk shows, it's like, Oh, you haven't been here in a while. It's like, so what, what movie you've been working on? And you can go on. And, and, yeah. And about, it's like Alec Baldwin status on Saturday night live. So I've next, you go. next show, we get a jacket. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Oh, we'll get we'll send no we'll send you some t shirts and mugs. Oh good. Yeah, I've seen quite stuff. a few. I yeah. happen to hang out with you for the last month and a half or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's no accident we that you're on the show. We have been spending quite a bit of time together because uh, our grandfather, we actually share our mutual grandfather, not and we're not talking about space grandpa from back in the day. Uh, we're talking Spence Purvis, who passed away at the ripe old age of one hundred years and one month. Yep. It was, yep. uh, we did the, the going out party for his hundredth birthday together and we put him in the ground together. So. <laughs> yes, we and did. I mean that literally, literally, so. we were the ones that actually put him in the ground. Yeah, and, so. yeah, I would, would have thought it would have been somebody else, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff has happened. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, you were one of the few people you were in on the first battery of screen tests back mm -hmm. when, uh, you remember Rebecca. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so we—I uh, don't know how much information I can give, but you and I did oh, some yeah. screen yeah. tests. Yeah, you can. You oh, can. Cool. Yeah, so we yeah. did some screen tests for True TV, and yep. Uh, yep. it was good. I mean, it went well. Obviously, there was a, a little bit of a change, but I—I'm yeah. just impressed. You know, I—I've I, teased you my whole life because you've known me forever. Yeah. But it's impressive to see that what was a little us on the Skype with a random. TV channels turned into an actual documentary. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a big, it's a big thing. The, big the, Toronto, thing. the Toronto Film Festival, which is coming up, uh, starts at the end of this month, and Patricia Steer and I are going to be flying up for it. And I, I think I've sent you the links. It's like, look, three three thousand entries into this film festival. It's been going on for twenty twenty five years, twenty five years uh, anniversary, as a matter of fact. And out of that, one hundred and one hundred and ten were chosen, I think, maybe. 
And out of those, we're already being talked about in the top 10, which that's is amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's co- awesome. Considering that True TV, I feel I still feel for Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will I will mention her. I will I will vindicate her before it's over because she stepped forward and said, "Yeah, this this is something. I can absolutely sink my teeth into this." And she did the screen test. She put her neck out there, and they chopped it off. <laughs> yeah, she should get the credit. But I think what's amazing about the whole thing is mm-hmm. just looking back, and it was you, myself, I think, Jaron. Maybe even Eric Dubay, but this was before a lot of people had entered the community. I mean, if you look at who's entering the documentary now, it's almost a whole new set of characters. So it's pretty amazing to see how it's evolved and how mm-hmm. many more people have joined the movement and actually put a lot of really strong content out there. I mean, I think Patricia said it, you know, us entering in this, there was nothing. It was you and a yeah. couple other videos out there. And, and now it's, I mean, you know the count, but oh, I, yeah. can't, well, I can't keep up. Well, heck, let, I'm, that is a good segue into this little thing. Let me read. Uh, it'll take me uh, four minutes to read this. The uh, There is an article that I found, you know, because every day not only do I have to search YouTube and type in Flat Earth and scan through the dailies, and you can never get through them. I mean, there's so many videos you can never, you're never going to be able to watch them all. If you're just now tuning into Flat Earth for the first time, I'm both I, – I feel good for you and I feel bad because you are never going to get through all the content. There is just far, far too much. I, I don't care if you don't sleep for two weeks. That's that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also go into Google or whatever search engine you use uh, and type in Flat Earth and see you – know, I click on news and I set the filter to 24 hours and say, OK, what's happened? And I think I sent you this one. This one's from IFL Science and the original article was from – and I looked it up – is from YouGov dot mm-hmm. uw.com and they were the ones that were the, the the stat and it's fascinating so the title goes a little something like this if you guys haven't you guys haven't heard this yet and i'm not making this this is not an april fool's thing this is no it has nothing to do with the fact that it's april 3rd this thing was done in february of this year just 66 percent of young adults in america accept that earth is round according to the new survey right Mm-hmm. It goes a little something like this. The Flat Earth movement clearly isn't going away anytime soon. Duh. Although we'd argue that it's not going to suddenly become a mainstream belief. Oh, yeah. It is concerning how disgust it is. Remember, this is a science site. And admittedly, the coverage of it from the scientifically whimsical to the ridiculous probably isn't helping by giving such beliefs a platform. Still, it's a phenomenon worth looking into. And a YouGov survey has done just that. The results are either optimistic or unsettling, depending on your perspective. Surveying 8,215 U.S. adults weighted to the representative of the entire United States population, it suggests that just 84% have always believed the world is round. Among 18 to 24-year-olds, however, this percentage falls to 66%, though it continually rises through various age groups to reach a peak a peak, mind you, of 94% at the 55 and older crowd, which means at the very least, no matter what age group, we've got 6%. And in the 18 to 24, we've got, was that 34%? 34%. That's, that's, that's massive. That is, the numbers are staggering. And I always knew it was. Uh, the thought that just two thirds of young adults in America accept that the planet is an oblate spheroid is deeply concerning. But wait, there's more. Five percent of U.S. adults have always thought the world was round, but have become more skeptical as of late. Uh This number rises to nine percent among 18 to 24 year olds. In contrast, two percent of all those surveyed have always believed the world is flat, which rises to four percent among 18 to 24 year olds. Seven percent of the total answered either other or not sure, which rises 16 percent in 18 to 24. Generally speaking, the older someone is in the United States, the less likely they are to have any flat earth beliefs. Of course, in this sense, then the trend is the opposite for the acceptance of the theory of evolution in its most basic form with older people less likely to accept that life has evolved over time. Other curiosities pop out of the YouGov survey. Slightly fewer Democrats have always believed the world is round compared to Republicans or independents. Slightly more men have always believed the world is round compared to women. People earning 80,000 per year are more likely to accept the correct shape of the earth. Uh, Yeah. Than those earning 40 to 80 or under 40. No part of the U.S., this is the part I like, Northwest, South, etc., has more died in the wool flat earthers than any other. It's, it's, flat, it's, it's straight all the way across. 
the, the numbers don't change no matter where you live. Uh, and then one more thing. <clears throat> uh, most flat earthers, perhaps less surprisingly, are very religious. Uh, 52%. Uh, and that, that's the very religious side. If you take in like somewhat religious and then kind of religious, it bumps it up to, I think, about 80. Again, not a shocker. Uh, religious conservatives were found to be consistently display a low faith in science, unwillingness to support science, blah, blah, blah. It's not clear. Uh, this Again, this is how it ends. It's not clear at present why the 18 to 24 year olds are more likely than others to doubt the shape of the planet. It's possible that the current political climate of post-truth along with the misuse of social media are fueling the fires, but this is uncomfortably juxtaposed with the fact that millennials, a loosely defined group of young adults that often mistakenly include teenagers, are better educated than the last three generations of Americans. That's it. It has nothing to do with education. And that's the article. If you guys want to look it up, it's on TFL Science. Just look up the title. Just 66% of young adults in America accept the Earth is round. And then the Just Gov one is called. It's a different title. Most flat earthers consider themselves very religious. That's the original title of the, the core article. But the, you know, the, the other place picked out. It's like, yeah, why, why are the 18 to 24 year olds? And this is a group that does not make a lot of flat Earth videos. Mm-hmm. It's well, an general- interesting part. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the interesting no, part is that if you look at the older generation and they were kids during the high, you know, high of NASA right. and they, they, they didn't have social media. And I think that, you know, I made a comment to you earlier today that higher educated people, but their education almost comes from different channels now. You know, it's not opening right. an encyclopedia and forced history. It's opening up the Internet and doing your research and actually citing Internet sites like Wikipedia, which, you know, whether that's 100 percent accurate or not, it's still citable oh, sure. and YouTube can be cited. So I think that the open mindedness is is important. And there's less globes sitting on desks now that used to be a staple in the you know 70s and 80s. And now people don't even have maps anymore. No. They don't need them. It's on their phone. No, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, the, the curse of technology has also become sort of a, a blessing for us. Because people, yeah, everybody in that age range, they live and breathe on their phone or tablet or whatever, which means they're not going to access any other, you know, all their information is going to be electronic. And I hate to say it. People say, oh, you know, you can't use YouTube as an educational reference. It's like, why not? You use it for all sorts of stuff. How many people look up YouTube for a cooking reference or how to fix something on their car or how to set up something electronically happens all I've used it. How many times I've used so many times to fix little bugs in my computer. Mm-hmm. Well, to find out if, if there is a bug, if there's a legitimate bug, that's how I found out how my, my blue microphone had a conflict. <laughs> yeah. Was, and that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an, it's a how to right at your fingertips that actually yeah. shows you taking, disassembling something. I mean, unboxing has become, one of the most popular things on YouTube, which is weird because who wants to watch someone take something out of a box? So exactly. it's it's interesting. But yeah, it's, a, it's starting to show that there's a swing in the mindset and, you know, it, it's the awakening of people taking their own free speech and, and expressing it. And yep. I think it's no longer becoming yeah. – people don't look at you as weird as they did in 2015. And and people have always been asking us for numbers. It's, you know, I, I get that question, I think, one out of every five interviews I do, which is, mm-hmm. he's like, well, what kind of numbers are you talking about? I'm going, they're huge. They're freaking massive. You just don't know it because we don't have, you know, we don't wear arm patches or special stickers on our cars or anything like that. But the, the numbers bear out. I mean, there's millions and millions of, and these, where do you think these hits are coming from? Uh, in in YouTube, where do you think all these websites are coming from? How it for someone to create a brand new channel and get so excited that they start making flat Earth videos out of the blue? That takes a lot of motivation. And uh, in fact, I was so these numbers were even higher than than I'd initially thought. But the the eighteen to twenty four that that really was fun to see. So I sent that straight to the documentary crowd and I said, "Look, you you want your selling point? Here it is." Yeah, you you've got a built-in audience for a, a movie or a show or whatever. It's there. The numbers prove it out. So go make it. You there will be people watching this. In fact, they're they're waiting to watch it on mainstream. It's just that nobody's produced it yet. Uh, Rebecca was not a fluke. You know, mm-hmm. she she came out. You know, it's like yeah, we can absolutely and remember she wanted to do a, a reality television show. Yeah, flat yeah. Earth reality show, and they said you're fired. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, she, like I can always see her like snapping her fingers, going, "Damn it." And and then walking out, but she's been following us ever since. I mean, the fact that she showed up in Raleigh, 
I, mm-hmm. I hope to God I get a chance to vindicate her. I will I will mention her name every chance I get when when people say, well, you know, how, who was the first person to approach you? I'm going, it was her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, this was like, I, I don't, how, how many months into it? Probably uh, Not more. It was the end of yeah. summer, I think. End of summer, probably. You were probably into it a little longer, but I don't think all the clues were completely out at that point in time. I think you still barely, have maybe a couple more. Barely they yeah. were out. Yeah. Uh, oh, and were, I would... I wanted to add real quick because it's, we're on the topic of that yeah. that last thing you read, and, and I might be incorrect, but I wanted to point it out. I think that was a U.S. census that was done with just U.S. So just U.S. Think of the percentage in the world, oh, which yeah. wasn't even mentioned there. And I think that right. I wanted to point that out because that's actually important to know that absolutely because well because the U.S. Remember we're conditioned because you know, the United States space, space program, the Apollo missions. We are told it's like Americans went to the moon. Therefore, it's a globe and, you know, kids marching around like we went to the moon, you know, <laughs> you know, one of us. Whereas outside of this country, honestly, I'm really surprised that outside of this country, more people don't question the Americans. It's, yeah. we, we, we're, we still come across as the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's like, are you ki- I've told people in interviews, I said, I said, do not trust the Americans. Mm-hmm. We lie about everything. Why, why yeah. would you believe us? It's like, yeah, but you come up with such great stuff. It's like, that doesn't mean we're telling the truth. Well, and I think it's, you know, we're the economic giant and everybody wow. wants to be us. And, you know, and yeah. think of how many people have believed so many things over time. And it's starting to become, as we get more media in front of us and people actually debunking, if, if we want right. to call it that, you didn't have that in the 50s. You didn't have it in the 40s. You didn't have it. So, you know, those countries that were starting to get their economic turn back after World War II, you know, right. they had to look up to us. And it's just it's it's just the same thing as a globe ingrained in a child's mind. The Americas or the U.S. are ingrained in foreign country mind. You have to learn English. I mean, not every yep. educational system teaches that. So yep. the United States is their globe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Well, it staggered me when I was over in in the Middle East, and they still, to this day, still refer to us as the New World, <laughs> and we we consider that that term this this quaint little history book term. It's like, yeah, yeah, New World, whatever. <laughs> it's like, where's where's my Big Mac? Yeah. That's that's. But over there, it's like, oh no, I'd love to go to the New World. It's like, eh, I don't know how new it is, but compared to them, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, compared to them, it's like, you know, the, the, what, Americans only been around for 200 years. It sh- should still have that new car smell. It's like, eh. in the, in the West, yes. In the, in yeah. like California where, where, because yeah, on the West coast and in all the Western states where you are down in Arizona, they haven't been settled for that long. I mean, Arizona, you know, they took air conditioning before people really mm-hmm. started settling there. And that wasn't invented until the 50s? No, nah, I think it was a little before, but it wasn't 40s? mainstream. Yeah, yeah, 30s or 40s. But, you know, I mean, if you think about the really the Western rush, oh, Arizona yeah. gets established in the late 1800s. I mean, if you really think about it, that's oh, yeah. that's, yeah. you know, 100, 150 years ago. Right. And it just, it's, it's that's, kind of one of those things. That, yeah, yeah, that's not that long in the grand scheme of no, things. You know, there's Middle consistent. Eastern countries going, you know, we've been around for a couple millennia. And, yeah. you know, America's got, gotten off pretty easy. Anyway, uh, all right, so how much time we get to our first break? We got four minutes. We're, just so you guys know, we're, we will take calls, but we're not going to take it to the second hour. Just want to – we're because – I usually get so many calls, I don't get to talk about current events with anybody. So Trev and I are going to talk about current events this segment, next segment, and then we'll take calls and bounce stuff around in the in the third and fourth segment. I, so you and I, when you were up here, we were talking about stuff. Do you have any uh, opinion on the Mad Mike thing? Did you Have you gotten a chance to... To look at any uh, Yeah, I mean, I think it, and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm probably later to the show because I know you guys have been talking about it quite a bit, but, you know, it, it was one of those things where I never thought it would happen. I told you that over and over again that, you know, he's going to be stopped at every moment that, right. that it, you know, I mean, think, frankly, you're sending a guy up in a rocket and that's always been the way to control the people is not allow those types of things to happen. So the fact that it happened is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. You know, to judge why or what, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I know that there was some some flat earth ties to it, which is great. I don't think anything was necessarily accomplished except for good press. So at least the name yeah. gets mentioned. And, you know, I think that 
it's not really, and if we talk experiments, it's probably the last one I would try. I think there's a lot, <laughs> lot more economical ways to uh, get something up high enough. And actually, you could probably do it a lot less publicly if you want to try to prove it. So yeah. I, I think it was interesting. I, I know he walked away from it. That's good to hear. I, I think that well you know, I carried think away, carried away. Than, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, oh my back. Yeah, you know, that, and now he's probably thing. fine. So yeah. that's good. But I think ultimately, and I kept telling you, and maybe I'm the most negative person in the world, but I just never thought it would happen. I and oh happened. no no no, I didn't think he it would either. But then the speed at which he did it on his third try, I understood it more mm-hmm. because I had a chance to talk to the you know because there's multiple documentary teams that have been circling around different people. And he was one of them. And I talked to that team and they, I, I knew immediately, what well, we, we have to finish this movie. We, we've got to finish. You, you can't, you do not have, if you don't have a final launch, you don't have that big climactic, you know, I mean, use a film study, you know, character arc where, you know, he was, he was, he was thwarted once, thwarted twice, third time's a charm. And then he goes up. Uh, and, and out of that, we got three amazing rounds of press. You know, yeah. it, to fight, we got the third. It's like everyone, no one was shy about running the story the third time. I still think it was a little bit of cry wolf, but they, if, for considering, I think the community spent, I think, a little less than eight thousand dollars on him. You Cheap couldn't bargaining. ask. Oh God, that is money well spent. Yeah, extremely yeah, well, well spent. He, he did well, and the, he, it, I think it'll pay off more dividends because I think he will have a. Uh, a, a I don't think it's going to be a great documentary because it's just about him, and really he was late to the game and doing mm-hmm. flat Earth. But he will, it will move forward, and people will watch it because yeah. they're interested. It's like what sort of nut job uh, puts together a homemade rocket just to create more exposure for flat earth. And of course his future rocket endeavor, you know what his future one is, don't you? I thought he was going to go up like a hundred, oh, what is it? A couple miles, a couple hundred miles. Is oh, that what it- well, he was going to go up at least a hundred thousand feet, hundred thousand feet in yeah. a balloon. Oh, in a balloon, yeah. and with a well, with rocket attached to the balloon and then launch it from, from that altitude. And I'm thinking, Oh, well, there's there's a few problems that are going to happen there. Uh, one is uh, the vacuum. You know, he's going to have no atmosphere. He's going to have to go up in an ox with oxygen tanks. Second, he's going to get below freezing really, really fast. So hope to God all his gear is was testable in cold weather. And three, uh, what's he going to wait for exactly? Is he like in a like a disconnect from the balloon and then take off? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. we got twenty seconds to the break. You gonna you gonna hang with us till the uh, Till we come back? Am I? Yeah. yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I'm in. Well, I'm yeah. committed. I'm committed. So let's take well, some calls. Yeah, we, you, don't, you don't really want to say committed. It's on a flatter show. That's true. Yeah. I, in fact, no, I, d- I deliberately don't say it. I say dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. But my jacket is warm and it's white. So. <laughs> and why do you have a white jacket? Oh, I'm committed. So. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, see, you're, you're funnier than I am. That's true. Right. But don't tell oh, anybody. That's the music. That's a break. All right. Yeah. Three minutes. Hang tough, guys. Real people. Real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. I'm on with Trevor Purvis for this segment alone, just the two of us. And then... I know, right? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And then for segment 3 and 4, we will take phone calls. And so I will give out the phone number maybe at the end of this break or maybe at the beginning. A quick shout out to a good friend of mine, Teresa, up in the Northwest. I know she's listening to the show and she's been going through some stuff and my heart goes out to you. I'm glad you're a trooper. You've been sticking with us. 
Also, the peanut gallery mentioned to me that I should I should talk about the DNA thing. Did you hear did you hear that the Scott Kelly and his brother that story that came out recently? Oh yeah, that was I I, I don't believe it. I mean, they were twins, oh, right? no no it's yeah. a, it's a crock of crap. Yeah, it's absolutely. I just don't think it's, that's it, possible. Yeah, it's just a space reinforcement story. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, one of the Kelly the was it the Kelly brother went up into space, obviously. He came back down and they analyzed him and they said that 7% of his DNA had been changed by, I don't know, cosmic rays. And if you're wondering if you've heard that before, that's pretty much the plot of the Fantastic Four comic book series. So that's why I imagine he'll either turn into the Human Torch or the Thing or the, thing. the Invisible Girl. I'm not sure. But that, that I mean, that was the plot of just about every comic book that was that was going on for you know it, that's why the simpsons made fun of it and their generic comic book character was called radiation man mm-hmm. which was insert radiation into a human for various reasons radioactive spider radioactive dye that fell out of a truck blah 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 cosmic rays uh, gamma rays i mean seriously every marvel character i think was exposed to radiation and they turned him into some random form of superhero so yeah, and actually, I think uh, just to kind of a side note in Arizona, I think Scott Kelly was married to a governor or a senator, and she was shot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. Supposedly, supposedly shot in uh, outside of a supermarket, suffered a head wound, and and she could talk, but really slow and deliberately. And a lot of people were saying, you know, that was staged. Honestly, it's, you you know me. We we talked back and forth on this. I, after Sandy Hook, I just don't know what to trust anymore. When, yeah. I, when it comes to that stuff, there's just too many things. I, in fact, I've gotten to the point now where I can usually break down a conspiracy into one one sentence or less. It's <laughs> like uh, it's like Sandy Hook, uh, Charlie. Wait, was it Charlie? Wait, Robbie. Oh, geez, I keep wanting to say Charlie. Par- <laughs> Charlie Parker, the musician. No, uh, Robbie Parker laughing. Uh, yep. Uh, not, Off nine, camera. Uh, yeah. Nine yeah. Eleven. Uh, building Seven. Uh, the uh, Boston bombing. Well, first I don't care, but the pants bomb, the bomb that only shredded pants but didn't do anything to anybody else. So people were running around in shredded pants like they were cut up with razor blades, but they weren't bleeding. Anyway, um, there's something I want to mention to you real quick and, because we we talked about this before the show, and and this is not necessarily flat Earth related, but I I have to bring it up because it goes into like the power of media and the power of how things are. What, the YouTube shooter? Why would I bring that up? Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah, why? Peanut, the peanut galleries. Look, no, nobody died except for the shooter. She was um, a woman, so she's going to get a pass. And I, it was a domestic thing. Obviously, the boyfriend either – she was, she was treated wrong, and she came in to settle the score. And apparently, she only wounded him, or maybe she just wanted to wound him. And I think probably the other woman in the office that we'll never know the exact story, but you know how those go. Yeah, it's like it's like you bastard, you know, <laughs> blast him in the leg, you know, you know, bitch, blam, blast her in the shoulder, and then it's like I'm not going to jail for you, you know. That's how I write it. Anyway. In, the well, it's, it. it. I just kind of wonder though, you know, if the demographic of the shooter. If you know, luckily it wasn't a mass shooting. Whether you believe everything or not, it, the right. demographic of a shooter is always young white male, AR-15. Right. So, well, in the case of there's been one older white male, but so oh, let's introduce the women because it makes it easier to outlaw the next thing, the mm. uh, trigger guard that a woman would use on an AR-15 to make it able to be held by a smaller hand, which was a right. very sexist comment. But I'm just saying that that seems to always be the motive is. Blame it on AR-15, then blame it on an accessory of an AR-15. Absolutely. And in this case, no, because, you know, YouTube's got a little little higher security than that. So I'm sure she yeah. just snuck in a handgun, maybe a revolver. I don't know. You know, it's it wasn't really that much of a story. You know, the media jumps on it really quick. Uh, but but the end, we can't make fun of it now. Now that YouTube's put in parts of the new cruelty, YouTube mm-hmm. has been really uh, clamping down on people that make – Videos against mass shootings that they, they call them because they 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 uh, use the bullying clause, mm-hmm. which is all because all you have to do is say that somebody you, you can say, oh, this person's offending me because they're saying that I'm that I'm lying. And that technically classifies as bullying. You're bullying that person. And so that's different from a copyright strike. YouTube can come in and just say, nope, smack, automatic strike and much higher chance of letting it stick. 
and the and they've done that and that's the, you know one of the powers of media and i saw that in something recently which i, I have to tell you i gotta spend a little time on this which is I was coming up with different analogies and I was trying to figure out, you know, why people are holding on to the globe so tightly. And then I, and it occurred to me, you know, I'm a huge movie fan, you know, watched so many movies and, and, and television shows. And I thought, well, isn't that the same? Like with any really big movie franchise, Star Trek, James Bond, Harry Potter, take your pick, right? All these, all you know, if you go in and start, uh, uh, if you 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 all of a sudden go against the that lore, the stuff that's been going on so long, people will come down on you. They, they there's like I don't believe it. If you all of a sudden said that you know, oh yeah, the next movie James Bond is going to be gay, and you know he's also going to be a, a, a serial killer and a child predator, you know that sort of thing. People will be like, oh my god, you know it, it'll it drive them nuts. And I ran into that with – and I ran into sort of a, a combination of things with The Last Jedi. And you and mm-hmm. I briefly talked. I got to bring this up. I'm sorry. There's just I, – I, you know, it came out on DVD fairly recently. And I was in, I, the reason why I watched it was because of the Rotten Tomatoes score. You know, the, the, the critics, there's three – like there's only like 300-something critics, big critic, you know, professional critics that are out there. What has changed, though, is that I and I didn't realize this. Disney, who has saved up all its nickels and dimes over the years, apparently can afford to buy studios, mm-hmm. and so they bought Marvel, which is you know been doing pretty well over the last yep. dec- decade. And then they bought Star Wars. You know, they paid George Lucas whatever it was five billion dollars. Yeah, it's about five billion. But yeah, five five billion dollars. It like George needed it, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like Skywalker Ranch is paid for, guys. He doesn't yeah. need it. But it's like, oh, fine. You know, maybe I'll buy Nicaragua, whatever. So George, you know, he takes his money. And then uh, the, but the thing is, when now and, and now Disney is a com- – they've kind of become – they're not necessarily into the antitrust te- category, but they're getting there. So it's them and Marvel and Star Wars, all three franchises. So if they make a movie, think about it this way, and you're a professional reviewer. And you don't like the movie, do you risk it? Yeah, I mean, you and wouldn't. It's like, look, you're getting paid to review movies, and these guys own pretty much the summer now. Mm-hmm. They they own the whole summer schedule. Disney, one company, and if you want to show up the premiere, you want to get special access to stuff, or I don't know, you want to keep working. <laughs> You don't want to upset these guys. And so everyone gave them a pass. Everybody. Didn't matter what it was. But then something happened. And that was the popcorn, you know, because YouTube has the popcorn reviews now. They've been having that for a number of years because Mm -hmm. people are going, well, the critics aren't the, the popcorn crowd. And the popcorn crowd started going after it pretty quick. And initially it was like 57%. And then over the last few months, it's been dropping several percentage points to where now today it's 47%. Wow. Yeah, that's not that's not. And I'm going to release a video on this tomorrow. I've got to. I'm just sorry. I've watched too many rants because there's too many people that are really, 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 really upset about this. I'm going 47 percent doesn't warrant people screaming at 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 their at their computers screaming. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. you saw the one I sent you. It's like yep. you know, she and she was point on uh, the girl from uh, Mindless Entertainment. She, yeah. she she went on this rant. It was got to be twenty minutes long, and she was just I, I was almost wet rave for her to burst into tears, and she didn't. But her energy was off the freaking charts, and so I started going through. You know, you you can look through the the popcorn ratings, and you can look at the reviews from people. And I noticed that the reviews were really really low. And I'm going, I mean, way too low. I mean, like forty seven percent. That's two two stars, two two stars and change. Yeah. There were the, I didn't see any of those two stars, three stars. I saw one star, but then I also saw it. And you did. Most people don't know this. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, if you've ever done this, you can give it ten percent, which is a half of a star. What they don't tell you is because they want to play nice. They they think that you might be trolling. Anybody that gives a ten percent rating, your review stays there, but the vote doesn't count. Mm-hmm. The ten percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, but it's not rigged for any. I mean, it's rigged for the studios, but Disney will consider them damn lucky. And here's what I'm. I'll, I'll end this part with this, which is I went in. It's like me. It's like, look, I've got to know the numbers. I've got to know what the real numbers are. So I just went in and started taking random samples of 100 reviews, throwing them into a spreadsheet, adding them up, dividing them, doing my own thing, right? And I'm not kidding you. The results were 
epically bad. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll reveal that during your rant, but I imagine it's it's way below four. Oh, no, I'll, I'll tell you here, and then I'll, I'll do it in the video. Uh, no, I'll tell you. Yeah, I might as well. Which is, okay, so what I did was, and, and I won't rattle off the scores for you, so I, tell you, I just take 100, sample, you know, 100 reviews, put them in, and, and 100 in a row. I didn't pick and choose. I said, okay, I'm going to take this 100. And I threw out, of course, the zeros and the people that said they weren't interested. Mm-hmm. I only kept the one through five and the halves, right? And I put them in. Do you think it came in at 47? Oh, no. absolutely not. Do you Probably think not it came? 30. Nope, not even 30. Dude, yeah. it came in at 12. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is why Disney was freaking out because they, they were doing as much damage control. Disney, if you guys don't know already, immediately started getting all their, their media partners and saying, look, obvious that Rotten Tomatoes is being hacked. It's not re- it's not it, only women haters and Republicans and people are giving these horrible reviews. I'm going, no, 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 no. It's way worse than that. And I, so in mean, every sample, I was doing like 12, one was 11, one was 14, never, ever hit 20, never wow. hit 20. And wow. if that score would have actually been there, you know, it would have come in. And, let's say, let's round up. Let's get the middle of the road. Let's say fifteen. Oh my God, people would have been like, "How? How does this even happen?" Because you don't mess with a franchise. You just nope. don't let it. You don't let it happen. Be like, like James Bond films. You don't mess with the formula. That's how it works. You make twenty movies. You make them all the same. People get what they want, and that's it. Why would you roll the dice? <coughs> Why? Why would you do that? It is bottom line. It is not 47. It is not 30. It is not 20. It is in the teens, low teens. And that is because uh, the Rotten Tomatoes has thrown out the, the 10% scores. I, I don't know. I mean, I get, I kind of get why they're doing that, but wouldn't you want to tell people or is that just like their little sneaky things? Like, well, if you put one star, it counts, but if you put a half star, it doesn't count. It's advertising. Disney probably pumps a ton of money into them, and they can't. Uh, I mean, but this was this was done before Disney. This yeah, was, that's true. So it's 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 leaning towards the studios. I, it's I get leaning that. towards studios. Yeah, it has to because that's who funds. I mean, yeah. they wouldn't exist without them. So yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it was. It's, it's bad. It was amazing. Anyway, my, yeah. my personal – I'm not going to do a personal review now. I, there's way too much I could go into. Uh, just know I, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there for, for anyone. I'll, I'll speak in generalities. Anyone that says that they love The Last Jedi, I would come back at them and say, oh, but you do agree there are some bad movies out there, right? And then they <laughs> say, yeah, sure. And I go, really? Name one. <laughs> Yeah, tell me what you think a bad movie is. If you like the Last Jedi, I, Jedi, I mean, honestly, pick a pick a sci fi movie and tell me what it was. Because if it was any, in my opinion, if it was any lower on the scale of uh, watchability, it basically would be a sequel to Spaceballs. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what it would be. They, yeah. they, they they broke the lore. They introduced it again. I, I don't want to dwell. It's not like they they. In, it's not like there were just plot holes. If it was just plot holes, I could understand. Every movie has plot holes. I totally get it. You know, we need this character to get from here to here, but we don't exactly know how. Well, just get him there. Just get him there. It's like, all right, well, somebody might notice. Yeah, but it's small. It's not a big deal. The plot holes were so big in this movie, you could drive a jackknife truck through it and still have room. Uh, and and then there were universe changers. Uh, if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, I, I'll, I'll we'll end it on this. I swear to God, I'll end on this last <laughs> line, which is hyperspace weaponry. Yep. That's it. That's big time. This is it. It's like yeah. hyperspace weaponry. If you can explain to me how that is a thing now, and that has never been a thing in eight other movies, but now it's a thing. Then hey, you win a prize, and I'll I'll shut my channel down. You tell me how it's it's never happened. I, look, the Empire is a massive, massive thing, and so is the First Order. They have, like we do, weapon researchers, and that would have been explored. You know, because we're talking about a, a universe that apparently has had light speed for thousands of years. Yeah. Well, they have slow ships. Remember, they couldn't even catch them. So oh, no, don't get me started. <laughs> but uh, that you're no, you're right. It's uh, one of those things where you hate to. You hate to see it happen because it's Lucas Ugh. all over again. But it, you know, it's interesting and, and take it kind of on the positive. It's ruining space now. Star Wars <laughs> is, as, it as is what you want, and now it space is. is ruined. 
Yeah. So. <laughs> and I will say I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not some ogre when it comes to this. Look, I love media. I, I know I can I can see how I can spin it in a certain direction. I'll go fine. If you've never seen a Star Wars movie, you might like this movie. That's and, true. And, and if you're 10 years old, you'll probably like this movie. If yeah. you're any, if you're anyone else, <laughs> you are going to, you're going to lose it. But you put it, probably in front of all of those because it's still a probably. It's yeah. no guarantee. The 1977, and I'm probably wrong on the year. You're good at the years. That original Star Wars, kids loved because it was I something know. new. And, and, it, and, new- it's, and it stuck with them. It it stuck aged them. well and it carried with them. Anyway, uh, moving on. So the, uh, but I am going to release that video tomorrow. Okay. The what was I going to tell you about? So the film festival, yeah, which is coming up in Toronto, which is going to be I think I I may have told you. So there's you know three thousand, uh, you know there were three thousand applicants for this thing, hundred and something were chosen. We're already being talked about in the top ten. That's already. amazing. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. Considering I, like going back to Rebecca because we are going to give her as much credit as possible. Yeah, it. It was. It's a totally different landscape back then. I know you guys have talked about this. You and Patricia had talked about the. Well, maybe we should do a conference, but it was one of those things. Yeah, it's probably not going to work. And look what happened. You're already for Denver now. So it's amazing where it's going. And now it's going to be at a Toronto Film Festival, and yeah. it's going to do something. It's. Oh, know, I well, I, I you. I think I told you that Netflix is one of the main sponsors of this thing. Yeah. And yeah. again, like I won't go back to Disney, but like Disney, <laughs> uh, they have become look. You know, there's a reason why we have antitrust laws. Netflix has a distribution system built in. And they've had you know these were the guys that that put Blockbuster under the ground. <laughs> yeah, they were the ones that that finished them off, and it wasn't it wasn't a fun thing either. It was like they just brutalized them. Blockbuster is gone, Mo- you know, mostly because of Netflix, but. The uh, but because of that, they can go to film festivals like this, sponsor them, and then they can grab the directors or the producers almost immediately after watching it and saying, "Yeah." Or if if not, they probably get an advanced screening, and they can look at it and say, "Yeah, yeah, let's pick this thing up." And and there you go. I mean, it's instant content because that's all Netflix is about. We need more stuff to stream. Crank as much stuff as possible. Yeah, there was a joke, and I wish I could remember. It might have been South Park, but I could be wrong, where they just literally talked about Netflix picking up anything. Oh, A million dollars. And it's not to joke about what what the documentary you guys have made is, but to go back to Blockbuster, it's not just Blockbuster now. A lot of people don't even watch TV anymore. They literally watch Netflix. Or YouTube. Or YouTube. And YouTube's doing a lot of published content now, you know, outside of the – Oh yeah, the whole YouTube. Yeah. Well, YouTube's trying to break into as many things as they can. You know, the whole paid. YouTube is trying to kind of delve into the paid service, and I get that. But yeah. you're absolutely right. I have not seen that South Park episode, but you're absolutely right. And where... I could be wrong about it being South Park, but it was something. No, like no, that. no. It wouldn't su- wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Netflix is, has a hu- as a re- in fact a uh, little side note, and I, I can't remember where the story is. Hint to the peanut gallery is the Cannes Film Festival from the French Riviera. I think they banned Netflix movies this year. Really? I don't know exactly why, other than there's snooty French people. You know, yeah. is, but, but, but I mean, think about it. They are coming in. Look at, I, I got to admit, I have binged watch stuff on Netflix a lot, which is, oh, and that was fast. Do I actually have it? Uh, oh, South Park tears, tears into Netflix. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Well, the South Park guys would know full well. You know, they're they're in the Hollywood crowd. They're mm-hmm. down in Los Angeles. They're they're Netflix comes up talk time and time again. They have execs that that <clears throat> right now they're buying more than anybody else. And we had that we had the Netflix deal at the end of 2016, where the meeting went south immediately because uh, yep, there's the Cannes Film Festival reference. Let me click on that real fast, uh, real quick. Uh, Cannes Film Festival bans Netflix films from competition. Also, no more selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Two things will be missing from this year's Cannes Film Festival: uh, films from streaming services and red carpet selfies. How are you going to ban red carpets? Oh, because it slows everything down. Yep, that, nobody... that's exactly why they do it. But you know, it's uh, my uh, unfiltered mind. I mean, Netflix has become synonymous with an action now. You know, Googling's an action. Netflix and chill is now an action. So it's become mainstream with millennials as an actual action. Right. 
So, huh. Yeah. There's, there's, so the disagreement stemmed from conflict between Netflix wanting to debut films on its streaming service and a law known as French Cultural Exception, which has specific requirements for when films can move from theaters. Oh, Netflix broke the rules. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. they did because they're Netflix. Like, you know, what are you going to do, French people? We're going to we're going to stream this thing now. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. last year when we selected these two films, I thought I could convince Netflix to release them in theaters and they didn't. They refused. And so oh, so that's what it is. It's a uh, it's revenge. Yeah, that's why yeah. that's that's why they're doing it. But anyway, the the point was, is that Netflix is the biggest buyer in the game and uh, yeah they're buy they're spending they got to spend their money on something so why not become you know grab as much any content that's relevant cuz it's a crapshoot you don't know i mean one day you might get stranger things one day you might get jessica jones and they said they picked up by the way i will say this they picked up all the second tier marvel universe yes i did see that things yeah. which is does that mean they're actually working with disney Absolutely. Yeah. So Luke, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Daredevil. Uh, who else is there's another? There's a fourth one in that group. It wasn't Captain Marvel, was it? No, no, no. Okay. That's that's coming around. That's that's that's, around. that's DC. Oh, uh, that's what? That's DC. How? Oh. Yeah, that's DC. So is I believe Black Lightning, but that's oh. not on Netflix. Uh-huh. So, but it, but there's some good shows on Netflix. I mean, you know, it's hit and miss. They figure, well, we'll just. We'll just cut as many deals as we can, and we'll make it through volume. And they've they've done a anyway fantastic job. Hey, yeah. why are we talking about Netflix? Because they're the big sponsor for this thing. I've been my thought is if you guys are top ten, yeah, I think they're going to pick. I think that's what I mean. If if they're smart, it's and it's the American Idol concept. You know, you pick, right. even though you only award the one at the end of the show, you pick up the top five or pick up the top ten and see how they do. So I think, you know, you have a high probability of being published in streaming media. The question right. is, where do you fare in the end of it all? Meaning, yep. you know, do you, do, you, do you place top 10? Are you two, three, five? But if you get picked up, does it even matter? Yep. And, oh, I'm sorry, the, the peanut gallery just chimed in and he listed them all off. He, Daredevil, and this is pretty, honestly, find me another network that grabbed all these second tier. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Punisher, and then the team up of all those guys for the defenders. Wow, I don't know. Yeah, and so yeah, the, make money on it. I'm sure. And and you're right. Why not? If if you already know who the top ten are going to be, and let's face it, if you and and I was joking about this with with some of the other people, which is if you know you look up some of the other documentaries. No, I'm not knocking. There's some probably some great documentaries out there, but they sound so dull. Yeah, it's like one of the top tens is literally about the old time trolley industry. Uh, <laughs> like how, how many communities have anything to do with uh, you know late nineteen or early nineteen hundred pub- public transportation? Yeah, it's, it's can't can't be that many. When you pick up flat Earth because it's somewhat controversial, yep. and it's also even though and you know you get the negative press of people making fun of you, it's that Jersey Shore potential train wreck, and no offense to you guys, that people are going to want to watch because they don't get why it's happening. So, right. you know, it could actually be picked up and do extremely well. And you know what? They're bringing Jersey Shore back. So, it, you know, it's it's not to say Oh, yeah, and that's Jersey it. Shore. Yeah. So, I mean, that's nothing compared to this. This, everybody's got an opinion on it. I did a video recently that, that said, look, love it or hate it. Nobody goes into Flat Earth saying, what the hell is that? Yeah, they may say, wait, that's not a real thing, right? But nobody says that Flat Earth, never heard of it. Yeah. Nobody uh, says it. You mentioned Flat Earth, the first thing people say, you don't believe that, do you? Exactly. But <laughs> it, it puts it on their mind. It, it, so it's one of those things that everybody knows it, and you mentioned the blurring effect, but everybody yeah. knows what it is because you, it's been conditioned out of them because it once was a truth. Right. But they always say, you don't believe that because – they yeah. taught to not believe it. Exactly. The first response is always denial. Uh, denial, five stages of acceptance. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. And everybody goes in denial. It's like, no, no, that can't be. Well, even I did the same thing. I was banging my head on the keyboard going, I can't believe I missed this. You know, yeah. the, this was a, this was a real thing. And oh yeah, it's, I think it could be potentially huge. And remember, oh, we got 20 seconds. It also gives the mainstream media 
a chance to latch on to it because it's a degree of separation. Now the media can attack the documentary. They don't have to attack us directly. Right. And that gives us a buffer. Yep. So, Protects you at yeah. least. So, yeah. All right. We're going to take calls coming back. Uh, 720-897-6111, 720-897-611, or 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Three minutes. Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. It has now become a call-in show, although I hope we're still recording for the archives because uh, my screen went all weird for a while there, and we didn't even hear commercials. It was just Trevor and I talking to each other. Well, technical difficulties. That usually happens when I'm on with you, so I had to take a sabbatical for two years. That's usually how it works. (laughs) Nice. Nice. That's good. All right, so I'll give out the phone number. There's a couple calls that are already in, but let's give out the phone number one more time. It is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Did I say too many ones? I don't know. Or 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. Okay, let's see who's on the phone. This is a guy. You you ready to take take? Oh yeah, I'm ready. I I don't get to see them like you do, so this is gonna I, be fun. I, I don't see them. I well, mean, you see I their just, number. Yeah, I see the number. Uh, let's do four one nine, four one nine area code. You're on live with Strange World right now. Don't be nervous. Four one nine. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? It's Marty Mar. Hey, uh, I'm I'm just at work listening to the show again. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, pu- I'll put you back on mute. Don't worry. Uh, all right, man. Take care. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> all right. I, f- I forgot to give out the other number. Which yes, is... you did. I was going to remind you. Uh, you crap. Uh, you know, nobody calls it anyway. Nobody calls that other number, which is, I hate the British, says, no, okay, I'll give out the British number and I will give the, okay, so the British number, if you want to call in, don't forget the country code, which is 011. The number is 442033392871. And if you want to call in and just listen, like that nice man from Ohio, uh, you can also call in to 6417937117, and I won't even see you. So there you go. Uh, let's pick up, da, 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 how about 215 area code? 215, you are on the air live with Strange World. What is happening? Hey, what's up, Mark? It's uh, Sean uh, Space and Spake from New England. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Pretty good. Just listening in. I finally caught you live for once. I usually do the YouTube thing the next day at work. Ah, well, you can't. <laughs> well, I, you may. Uh, I, again, I hopefully our recording went well because I it seemed to have a break in yeah. an hour. I hope it's not just the first hour, but if it is, that's fine. So, uh, any any? Yeah, no, it seemed it seemed okay. Okay. Anything on your mind? Um, I just wanted to talk about the, uh, the, yeah, I wanted to talk about the Convex Earth uh, documentary a little bit. Oh, right. Mm. right. Yeah. I mean, the first hour had me, I mean, at least at the minimum, they proved flat water without a doubt. I mean, at the minimum, that's what we can take from this whole endeavor. Right. I mean, once they started talking about an asteroid in space at an hour nine mark, I was like, okay. 
Yep. Uh, okay. Okay. What's what's happening here? Yeah. <laughs> I was and, like, okay, what's what's going on here? And you they and you saw good. they were doing you, great, and then all of a sudden, you was, saw some of the backstory stuff, right? Yeah, I did. I, I watched the Globusters. We were wrong video thing. Um, yeah. How like they talked to like a blippo and a bush and whatever the yeah. alien thing. And, yeah. I, you know, uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 see, I wanted to come out and announce like, oh, we're doing a 2.0. And that was just like to get the dear Globy friends can be dragged along. Got to drag along the sheeple. You know, that's my biggest hope. Fingers crossed, you know, but I doubt it. Um, I kind of. It like, goes like three ways. There, there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know what you're saying. I kind of treat them like the, uh, the just the bandwagon crowd. We've gotten mm-hmm. we've we've gotten so big now that you've seen it. You know, giant channels are jumping in on this, and yeah. they they seem to jump on it as well. Which is like, okay, we'll tell people we've been researching this for seven years, and we'll do some tests over you know whatever you know over the water, which is fine. Again, but it came off as like they were trying to pitch it to a South American network. It came off as kind of a cheap version of Ancient Aliens, which is fine. You know, it, you know the, yeah. the the first hour was engaging, <clears throat> but after that, yeah, it, I, I was like, okay, we're done. Yeah, and they and they and I mean, and it was all all three of the same. It was all it was an hour of the same three tests. Just you know, repeated yeah. different mannerisms, you know. So exactly. and then they're like, "Oh, what's the result going to be?" And it's yeah. like, you know, we all know what the result's going to be. They could have just done it in order and then gone on with it. But um, yeah. you know, I think it's, it's either they're ignorant and they just don't understand space is fake yet, and so they're like still stuck on that part of it. Uh, but they, you know, at least they proved water is flat. Yeah. At minimum, so they're like, maybe still stuck in that. Or maybe they it's figured hard, that it's was, hard it, to say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, but they never even began. And remember, this if anyone had an excuse to jump after the Americans, <coughs> it'd be these guys. So, and they didn't. Why? Right. Why? You know, you're from Brazil. Why aren't you attacking NASA? You, there's you have no skin in the game on this. Why not? Yeah. Well, I think just with their as they come out, it'll just automatically happen as it goes. You know, like, well, here's our evidence, and like, it's like, oh, well, that goes against everything that they say. Right. You know, so it's like, um. <laughs> Right. Yeah, eventually it'll just come out in the wash, I'm thinking. And, and then more, more and more researchers, you know, more and more scientists may, might come out because of this, too. Like, who knows? Yeah. Maybe yeah, I, like I, closet I, flat earth, like actual, you know, followers who like yeah. are like, all right, well, I've been working on this thesis for a while. At the time, I release it now. Yeah, it's it's not going to hurt us in the end. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, there's a few trolls that jumped on the whole alien speaking Brazilian in in the bushes type thing. Which is yeah. fine. I I expected that, but it's still the the first part. If you if you cut out the the if you just stopped it at the first hour, and released it, you know as as that, right. it would be pretty intriguing. It looks like they spent quite a bit of time. Uh, yeah, that'd so. be perfect. Yeah. They should have just stopped right there. They should have stopped right there at what at a minute five and just been done with it. Yep. Yeah. Run credits. Yep. Yeah. So then they just repeat, <laughs> they did their little, you know, like, oh, this is what we think. And then they did their, and then they just repeated themselves. Oh, we did this test and we did this test. Right. They just repeated themselves the last half hour. So it was like, it's, it's ah, not, whatever. it is what it is though. I yeah, mean, it is what it, it is. Not, hype, you know, but I'm not too worried about it. It's not going to, they did it in three different languages. It's not going to even be in the same running as the documentary that we're doing. And it's going to be. It, yeah. it, it'll play it'll play well in South America and I'm sure some they'll be able to do something with it and who knows they, they may help them in the end uh, you know it's like whatever is hey water is flat so I mean I mean yeah. at least they prove that that water is flat no matter what so like right. they prove that over miles and miles and there's no way you can deny that water is flat now so it's like, exactly if it exactly. is that at least so we can, it's a good thing yep. but anyways I'll let All you right. guys go and um and for the rest of the show and the rest of the call shout out to uh Pancho Pete Chan Sleep Chan Strong and uh, you know Uber and uh, Zulu. Sorry, I didn't get to meet you guys at the meetup. I had a uh, was incapacitated, but um, no worries. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, shout out to everyone. All and right, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna until uh, I All die. Right. Enjoy. All right, see you, man. All right, bye. All right, let's jump right into 404 area code. 404, you are on live with Strange World. Are you just listening, or you got something on your mind? Yeah, I got something on my mind. How are you, Mark? I'm good. What's up? Good, good. So I was on my news feed on Facebook, and there was like an advertisement for a pro-NASA t-shirt. Yeah. Clicked on the comments just to see what people were saying. 
Yeah. Now get this. At least 70% of the comments were either the moon landing was a hoax, NASA never went to the moon, or I used to believe the moon landing, but now I have strong doubts. Nice. Nice. Have you been listening? Did you listen yeah. to the show long enough to hear me read that article? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. That's, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that means the basically there's. Higher than what, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's probably even higher than that. But that means there's you know, millions, millions of Americans at the very least and in all age groups. So I'm I'm excited. I, I so, think. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So right underneath that advertisement, there was a uh, like a video that people were sharing. It's like a public service announcement type viral video thing. Some guy was trying to link up a comment that Trump had said about, you know, space would be a great place for war with the idea of, man, that's probably a good idea because an alien invasion or even a fake alien invasion, that's what he said, would be good for bringing people together. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a takeoff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take off on the Ronald Reagan UN speech from 1980 something. Where Reagan said, wouldn't we'd all, you know, wouldn't we all just come together as a world if there was something uh, if they came in from the outside? And it's like, yeah, yeah, we would. But since we don't, we're going to attack each other. <laughs> That's how we work. So so I got a quote from you or for you from the video. Mm-hmm. The best evidence for the existence of alien life out there yeah. is that they haven't made themselves completely known to us yet. Mm. I like it. Goes yeah. along with, goes along yeah, with the whole prime go. prime directive. So what I'm what I'm thinking is this guy who made the video is going to be quite disappointed when he finds out the alien invasion is led by Bilo, the squeaky alien in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that squeaky alien in the bush. I hated it so much. <laughs> oh. it was Star Wars again. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The character. I would have been happier if a porg would have been in the bush. Exactly. Yeah. Sellable at least. Yeah. All right, Mark. Well, uh, All right. I'll let you go, man. I know you okay. probably got other calls. I do have other calls. All right. Have a good thank night. Thank you. All right. See you, man. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Uh, before I pick up this one, it's gonna I'm gonna pick up. It's gonna be Canada 306 area code. I just want to mention that the peanut gallery always on top of it. The Reagan speech was from September 21st, 1987, when Reagan was talking about Space Force. So there you go, 1987. I, I was going to say 88, but I'm going, wait, that's an election year. Ugh, I think he was out yeah. by then. So uh, let's go pick up Canada. Eh? All right, Canada, you're on 306. What's going on? Hey, Mark, how you doing? It's Mike here again from Canada. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing there pretty good. What sound of Wisconsin? <laughs> that was oh, not Canadian. No, Wisconsin That's a good one. That's and a good Canada one. and and Minnesota up there near the Iron Range. They um they, they're pretty close. Yeah. There's there's some bleed That's over. Good. I like it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you see the announcement no, just, of uh, that uh of the um uh the Canadian conference? It's gonna be Edmonton in Alberta. Yeah, you betcha. I, I'm uh, hopefully going to get going to that one for, uh, meet you up there. Right on. Oh, I'm definitely um, going to be there. So, so what I was just, oh, for sure. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you about 10 bags of ketchup chips for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're going to have to eat them all for me. They're good chips. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to make a reference to that uh, documentary too. I was, the way I was uh, viewing it too was, like I'm, I'm getting tired of. Uh, I don't know if it's misleading information or if they're like it's kind of weird because they're doing all these measurements for flat Earth and they're doing them bang on on the water. But yeah. as the narrator is talking, he keeps making a reference to the planet. Right. You know, he says, "Oh, on the planet, planet this, planet that." I'm like, right. "Would you stop saying planet? You guys yeah. are like totally." 
just screening it as you're talking, you know, like, uh, I don't yeah, understand yeah, why you, they do that. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's one of the first flat earth groups I've ever seen that actually embraces the whole flying asteroid thing. It's like, seriously, yeah, cause yeah, we've been, yeah. we've been saying, look, it's not an asteroid in space. And these guys are absolutely going down that road saying, oh no, it is, a, it is an asteroid with two, two things of water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I'm Whatever. also wondering about your uh, the uh, the film that you, the documentary you did. I know yeah. it's going to be in the in the trial there in the yeah. film festival. But is there a like do you know about a release date or anything for you for the, that at well, all? No, or no, no, no because the, the film festival, festival is the first time anyone's going to see it. The, fr- the the first day it's going to be shown, I think, is on April thirtieth. We are going to get a private screening on the 1st, and then we're going to go see it in the theater on the 2nd. It's only being shown at one theater because, remember, it hasn't been bought yet. Oh. So the, how the film industry works yeah, oh, okay, is for sure. you shoot a movie, and then you uh, you apply to different film festivals in order to get the attention of distributors. And then the, yeah. they watch the movie. They say, hey, yeah, it's great. And then they either mass produce it to DVD. They go streaming with it. They, mm-hmm. you know, they say, hey, we could actually put this in theaters and whatever. And then people yeah. can see it. So do, Emma, if you're asking when will I put it on YouTube? Oh, probably never. They will. I don't think they're ever going to allow. Oh, me. OK. Because I won't have even oh. uh, there's the irony, even though I'm in it a lot. Uh, yeah. it, I don't I don't own the rights to my own images <laughs> so it's like uh, oh, okay. crap yeah it sucks interesting but, okay yeah. Yeah, but yeah so yeah. no nobody's well, gonna see it yeah, until just... a distributor picks it up so i would imagine sometime in the summer okay cool yeah, yeah. awesome yeah okay well i guess that's all for me and i'll uh let you go and get you some more calls in there all right and uh yeah save some pierogies for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> we want some Tim yeah, I'll, I'll cook them up fresh for you. Okay. Tim Hort- yeah, Tim Horton say yeah all yeah. the way, man. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Take it easy, guys. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. All right. Let's go to start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Now. Hey, good evening. Oh boy. What's going on, Mark? Oh boy. From New York. How are you? I'm good. Not much. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. What is going on with YouTube? Uh, oh, you mean the, the shooting? The shooter? What? Yeah, what the hell happened? No, I, the best I can tell, uh, it was that it was a di- domestic dispute. That, that Because, well, okay, oh, so, okay. Okay, look, is, do you have any other reason? You never hear of a lone gunman who's a woman. So, you know, it's... Okay. So, she, it was a female. Okay. Yeah, woman goes in, boyfriend probably did something horrible. It's always the man's fault. She goes in and with a handgun probably and, oh, yeah. and put puts a couple in him. And and you know, hopefully it's hopefully she does it, you know, in a in a cinematic way. It's like, oh no, you're not gonna die. You're gonna live to regret this day. You know, blam, blam, blam. And then uh <laughs> she, you know, then the girlfriend who's probably in the cube behind him, it's like, Don't think I forgot about you, sweetie. Blam blam. And then, and oh, then it's like, shit. and the boyfriend's going, they're going to put you in prison forever. He goes, she's going, oh no, I'm not going in prison for you. Blam. And then she shoots herself in the head. I, that's, <laughs> that story writes itself. <laughs> yeah, it does. Wow. I see it. Yeah, it does. So that, three, three, I can wounded. see a few crisis actors who could play that part. Well, yeah, three, three wounded, one dead and something like that. So I don't know if it even qualifies. I mean, yeah, it's an interesting shooting but it's not it's, it's we, we have to use an ar no i doubt it we, women almost always use handguns always because because remember they can just put it in their bag nobody's gonna check it oh, yeah. even, gonna look. In fact, if, even if they had a metal detector there it, they wouldn't even have looked it's like whatever just get through i'm not gonna look in your freaking purse <laughs> uh, insane. insane i know i know well, that, so, we, so we don't know and, and this go ahead, go ahead. Uh, too crazy too yeah. crazy i was just gonna say that and then this uh <laughs> what, what you guys are doing the voice for bilu is that his name bilu 
Oh, that's the stupid little alien, alien in, the, in the bush in the bushes. Oh, it was... <laughs> oh God! I, I was when really. I, I, that, I, I almost fell out of my chair. I wasn't embarrassed when I saw that. I but I was thinking, <laughs> come on. See, well, because he left it up on the internet. It's like, come on, you 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 actually released that? Come on. And then you're going to come back and say we did seven years of hard research. It's like, but you you heard, you you heard through the alien grapevine that it was convex <coughs> from an alien that was in the bushes talking yeah. Brazilian. Like yeah. a, it, it wasn't even a good voice. It was like a like a like a, somebody was doing a Brazilian puppet show. It was that that sort of squeaky ventriloquist type voice. Yes, yes, and yeah. that's why I wonder was was it all a setup to just group us all in and say, Hey, see flat earthers are batshit crazy. No, no. I think I just, I don't know I, no, no, what no, no, the no. deal I, is. I think he wanted to turn a buck. I think that's what he did. The production. The, just, the, really? Just trying to make a dollar. Oh yeah. Which is look, we will follow the American, uh, format from the late nineties, you know, when ancient aliens started firing up or I think it was, it totally 90s. was. Oh my God. When we talked <clears> about it, it would totally was like an ancient aliens episode. Yeah. I, I was frustrated. I kept waiting for, and right after the commercial break, <laughs> you know, a resounding <laughs> no. <laughs> oh what, my God. It was what did me. the alien tell him? Did he reveal secrets <laughs> that could change the course of civilization? Yes. You know, we'll let you know after news. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. Hey, I have a quick you, quote uh, for you and I'll let you go. So yeah, I don't go ramble ahead, go on. Ahead. What is can, it? Uh, Grab some others. Um, it is keep away from people who try to belittle your ambitions. Small people always do that, but the really great make you feel that you too can become great. And that's oh. Mark Twain. And that's a personal one for me. And that's kind of why I flock to you guys and hang out with you guys. You know, that I feel like learning from, you know, and I'm not just puffing you up, everybody. Yeah. But, you know, just we have to stick together, power in numbers, you know, get your stuff straight. Don't go rambling on and try, you know, because unfortunately, I've heard some of the debates on, you know, on the videos and things. And people have great intentions, but they just they sound like and I don't want to be insulting, but they sound like they don't know what they're talking about because they're all over the place. You know, I they, know. they're not luckily, focusing on the one that. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. But luckily for us, and, and you heard me read the article in the beginning, we have the numbers. We got a lot of numbers. So don't don't sweat it. Not yeah. every, not everyone. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. That's that's why I wanted to be somewhat inspirational there with that quote because I think we're doing good. I mean, we talk to each other. You know, the bigger channels don't you know talk down to the smaller channels. We all we're all together. You know, we all have to put our pants on one leg at a time and yeah. you know again same team same team right uh, i absolutely agree uh i have a quote for you from the peanut gallery awesome. ready? ready here we go uh so the world go got compulsion com compulsion schooling at the end of a state bayonet for the first time in human history modern forced schooling started in prussia in 1819 with a clear vision of what centralized schools could deliver one obedient soldiers to the army two obedient workers to the mines three well sub subordinated civil servants to government four well subordinated clerks to industry and five citizens who thought alike about major issues and that was from John Taylor Gatto. Wow. I know. He goes, that's they, it. So they were the, hmm. yeah, they were the first of the, you know, the drones, I should say. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, I read somewhere that universities and things like that were Masonic and that they were started by them. And I wonder, was it all a plan from the beginning? to start indoctrinating and getting people on the same side, you know, on, well, on the same wavelength, so to speak. The Masons were the ones that founded public schools. You know, mm. they were the ones that created church versus state, separation of church and state. Mm. You know, they it's a big, because before the Masons got involved, and I'm not back in the Masons here, the, the churches ran the schools. 
Jesuits. Mm. There you go. Right. There you go. Hey. Yes. Oh, hello, Trevor. I'm hey. sorry. I, I am sorry. I'm so rude. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. I, it's, I it's, love you too, man. Yeah. You're awesome. I was about to say, I, I, Mark is one of the few guys that would have been old enough to remember you in the in scheme yeah. of things. No, and oh, I, absolutely. I totally do. I have to be quiet when you guys talk because unlike you guys, I do not have a voice for radio. Oh, so it, it, no, no. But it's just good. Cause, <laughs> just because you sound like the ghost of Harold Ramis That's doesn't right. necessarily mean that uh, it's a bad voice. No, it's it's uh, very soothing. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sound bad. Like don't remember who, <laughs> Harold Ramis was Egon from Ghostbusters and a whole bunch of other movies. <laughs> Ended up directing, and uh, he was the guy that directed most of Bill Murray's mo- movies. They were best friends. Yeah. So. Yeah, they did yeah. good work together. Yeah. All right, man. Any uh, any parting words before I move on to? Uh, just again, keep up the good work. Love you guys. Shout out to everybody in the chats and out there in the community. Love all of you. And just keep it up, keep spreading the word. I, you know, da- David Weiss. After we met, he gave me a stack of those. Oh, I told you, a stack of those uh, Google Flat Earth oh, nice. bookmarks. I nice. have been putting them everywhere, like oh, the most. Lord. A- any place I could find it, it'll be a weird place where somebody has to see it. I'm putting yeah. it. <laughs> nice. So I've probably hit a thousand people. <laughs> right on, man. That's it's awesome. All right. It's awesome. Got to keep it up. All right. Hey. All you right. Good... Love you guys. Keep it up. All right. See ya. All righty. Bye uh, bye. Bye, Trevor. Bye. See you, man. <laughs> the uh, we're not going to pick up a call before the break because we only got like thirty seconds before the break. Thanks, but I want to mention real quick. Uh, this one's for you, Trev. That as we were doing this show, uh, thir- thirty minutes ago, a brand new science thing, sciencealert.com. Mm-hmm. Never going to guess. And the the headline reads: No. One third of millennials don't actually think the earth is flat. Huh. In fact, is it a question mark or are they making the statement? Oh, hang on. They're trying to spin the data already. Yep. They're trying to spin the data. Well, why wouldn't you? Yep. Uh, We'll talk about it when we come back. Yep. It seems to me so strange. Check wallet for his name. His face is in the muck. I think his zipper's still. Is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 4 of 4. Yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And quick correction from Patricia Steer of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, who said that, by the way, in Brazil, they don't speak Brazilian. They speak Portuguese. Portuguese. I had forgot uh, that. Yeah. Well, we speak American, so. Yeah, yeah we, okay. we speak American. We so it, and that's a nice segue into that I will be doing Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes tomorrow with the lovely Patricia Steer from 3 to 5 Pacific or 6 to 8 Eastern and the others in between. So check that out. And by the way, subscribe to her channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, otherwise known as F-E-O-H-P, if you like FLAs. Which is what? It's a five-letter acronym. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So when yeah, people throw me, and I know it's really trendy with the kids and all that. I can say that now because I'm I'm old. The uh, when people throw me, you know, uh, an acronym. I go, hey, is that a TLA? You know, <laughs> they go, what's that? I go, three-letter acronym. That's terrible. I know, and, and like two and three is also TLA, and four and five is an FLA. Oh man. But there is yeah. no such thing as a OLA one letter acronym because that doesn't make sense. 
So are you on AARP? I don't know. That's that's funny. Yes, I know. It's it funny. is. But that's hey, good. you know, I had a I had a comment, and I know yeah. we're taking calls, but no, no. It, the interesting thing, and I can't remember who mentioned it, but you made a comment. It's not like we're out there with bumper. I think you said bumper stickers, but we're not out there with with name badges representing flat Earth. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, the funny thing is, and and you were the first person I knew is look at all the flat Earth license plates now. So again, you know, it's one That's of those true. things where people are starting to admit they're part of a community. So I wanted yeah. to bring that up because you know, like to correct people. But you're you're right. Awesome. We I mean, we don't we don't have uniforms. We don't have robes with hoods, and we don't have a an official church with a Bible that comes later. Probably some I hear I hear some real estate down in. Um, French Guyana that's that's available. That's a Jim Jones reference in case you guys don't know. The, some kids aren't old enough to even know what we're – everyone's heard – like you, you've heard the term drinking the Kool-Aid, but not a lot of people remember. you got to be a certain age to even know where that came from. Drinking you had to explain it to me. You explained I did. For, for, like two for, weeks for ago. Drinking yeah. the Kool-Aid. I'm not going to explain it to you now, but if you guys want to look it up, look up where did drinking the Kool-Aid come from. It is a dark tale. Of, it is. Uh, and, and yeah, an American was involved, and it was you, know, you want to talk about mass shootings. <sighs> mm. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we we don't we don't have. I mean, there's lots of people that they have T-shirts, and yeah, there's some license plate on cars, and D D I T R H has done a wonderful job of of handing out stickers and and little cards and bookmarks and things and and uh we we have spread the word a lot but most of it's been as you know most of what's gotten out there has been of uh social media's version of word of mouth where people just keep sending links to each other it's like dude but you, you've heard me say it. it's the flat earth drug deal yep you know, it's like yo yeah. man you, you think you've, you've watched some weird videos no man watch this <laughs> yeah and it's, it's just flat. nobody wants to believe it they nobody just, wants to believe it they deny it and then you know i've I've been working on a guy. That sounds really bad, but I've been, you know, talking to this guy, and you know, it. Oh, on Grinder? Yeah. No, yeah, right. I swipe yeah. left. Is that how we do it on <laughs> Grinder? Uh, but no, and you know, it's one of those things where it's like he's going through that evolutionary process now of, well, yeah. what about? And it's always the what about. You know, why yeah. would we spend all this money? Why would Elon Musk spend money to send yeah. people into space? And yeah, and then yeah. they get to this point where it starts to make more sense. Yeah, if the yeah, if you get them to just start asking questions, that you've already got them at yep. that point. It's just a matter of time. Meaning, uh, you know, if they if they keep coming back to you every other day or every three days with emailing you or asking you a question or leaving you a message saying, "Hey, I've got three questions. Hey, I've got two questions." Eventually, they're going to have so many questions mount up that they're not going to be, you know, they, they they will have that tipping point. Yeah. Well, and it's easy for me because I have the head of freshman orientation as a cousin, so I can always just blame you. Exactly. You yeah, know, you could, you could well. blame me. I yeah, feel bad because you remember, you remember Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She, uh -huh. who she, you know, she, now she's a full blown shrink at a mental institution. She can't really bring me up that much anymore. And she's kind of like, I, I'm waiting for the day that all of a sudden someone says, Hey, didn't you know a guy like that? And she's yeah. like, uh, 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 because um, it is the guy yeah, yeah. it is the, it's like yeah it's like how did you know him again uh well oh, you know what? we were yeah, you know that, so you don't want to admit that i knew no. him in a way that nobody should know him and i didn't <laughs> track him yeah exactly yeah i helped i helped put her through grad school yeah well, it's a good thing that, her name is Chris and she's a girl because your grinder account I think expired last week so you nice, need to work on that nice. that's good all right oh, you know we had to pick up a call Oh yeah, this, this good, last good Hang on, uh, let's pick up Alhambra, California. Six two six. What's going on out there in California? Hey, what's up, man? Not so much. Hey, you can always tell California because they, they always sound so smooth. It's the weed, man. It is the weed. <laughs> well, well, no, there's really no rush to do anything. What the hell's the rush? <laughs> Yeah, because traffic's at a standstill. So exactly, traffic's at a standstill. Where, and where are where are you going? Where do you have to go in a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, and it's so you opposite from New York. Here. <laughs> you are stuck here. What's the hurry? <laughs> Enjoy it. Look around. Look around a little bit. Chill out. You know, <laughs> and yeah, you. I know you. You but, were born and born and raised in California, right? 
Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah. You, you were the house that, the house that we went to where you met my grandparents. Yeah. That was the house I was completely raised in, dude. I moved in here when I was six, and moved out when I was like twenty. Wow. Wow. So, so what? Uh, yeah. What's what's on your mind? Uh, right. Well, so speaking of uh, SpaceX and those idiots, yeah. Uh, how much power would you think that Noah has? Uh, NOAA, uh, based out of Boulder, Colorado, those guys. Yeah. I can't. You mean like, like, yeah. like military authority, or just we're talking technology? I'm talking just throwing weight around, telling people what to do. It shouldn't be that big. I mean, it's it's. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I believe. And you know they yep. they they track, you know, air quality and pollution crap and, uh, you know, ocean temperatures. So they would have been involved in uh, the beginning of the the movie, uh, not 2012, the one where the United States froze over. Uh, oh Roland, yeah, Roland Emmerich. Day after day, day after, after tomorrow. tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. Yeah. So anyway, why 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 do you ask about Noah? Did you see a van and it was full of guys with guns or something? No, uh, actually, <laughs> even stranger. What if I told you they told SpaceX what to do? Now, that would be interesting. I have an article right here. Yeah. Don't don't read the whole thing, but what's the title of From, it? It's called, it's, uh, let's see, the title of it is, Noah just prevented SpaceX from showing its rockets in orbit. That's a good find. When, did you, did you have a date on that thing? <laughs> March 30th and you know what dude I didn't find it uh I don't you've probably talked to Carl Stenbeck right uh, he found it really his, okay yeah his avatar is a little like ninja cat oh okay uh, yeah, that's, that's... yeah that guy he that's that's he really cool it. what and and basically Noah has authority over over SpaceX Oh yeah, dude. Basically, nice, cool. nice. All right, uh, I will. I will check into it. If somebody, in fact, I just got the link sent to me just now, and I'll make a look at the article real fast. Oh yeah, is that idiot from SpaceX? That blonde guy. Uh, <laughs> NOA just prevented space. I'm sorry, I hate him. So, uh, showing its rocket in orbit. It was released uh, just a few days ago. SpaceX will be intentionally ending live video coverage of the second stage. Interesting. They launched Falcon 9 rockets in space, deployed the crap, and then they cut. They cut away from it. And a NOAA spokesman. Interesting. Huh. Starman Retribution. Ooh, that's the follow-up paragraph. This raises some question mm -hmm. about the real purpose between Noah's action as the regulation specifically exempts small handheld cameras. SpaceX intends to obtain a full license. Wait, what, why does Noah have control over space stuff? That's a really oh well, no, keep reading, dude, because it and, gets interesting real quick. And it's now there is apparently no restriction in place for SpaceX next launch of the NASA cargo ship from Florida happening happening as early as Monday. Uh, which would have been yesterday. These no regulations were enhanced to prevent individuals from launching and flying their own personal spy satellites in space. However, as astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell pointed out on Twitter, it is not clear what national security rationale there is for controlling cameras on the second stage of SpaceX rockets. Nice. One theory put forth by Peter B. Disilding, editor of Space Intel Report, is that this may be some kind of pushback from NOAA because SpaceX did not have proper license for the cameras on the Falcon Starman launch, which showed a mannequin in a red Tesla, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, in recent weeks, both President Trump and the Commerce Department Secretary Wilbur Ross have praised SpaceX for, what, for that launch and the views from Starman. So it's difficult to see as some kind of top-down punishment. Wow. 
That is really, really interesting. What does seem clear, this is the last paragraph, what does seem clear uh, is that with the proliferation of micro-rockets, CubeSats, and even smaller satellites, these regulations on cameras in orbit will need to be clarified. Something else for the National Space Council to consider, no doubt. Fascinating. What, what's really fascinating for me is because NOAA was based out of Boulder, which I lived for 20 years, and so is, believe it or not, the Commerce Department. They're also based out of Boulder, Colorado, hmm. which is really odd. Huh. And they're mentioned it, it, during the somewhere, somewhere in this article, it actually says uh, that it's it's about them preventing, uh, it's about like normal people sending stuff up into space. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I read. That's how I yeah. read into it. It, it goes against your whole, well, you've never turned a camera back at the Earth because now they have an excuse not to. Right. This is prohibited. Interesting. Good stuff. Thanks, man. That's really, that's really that's, good. I thought that was interesting. Oh, and something else that uh, Jimmy actually brought up earlier today, or I think it was today or yesterday. I don't know. We talk about so many things on that show. We do like really just like live research on stuff. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but he brought up how if you type flat earth into the search bar, right? Yeah. yeah. You get really, you get a ton of results, right? But if you type it in with quotes, right? Mm -hmm. It drops a ton with just that. And then, but I brought it up to him. I was like, dude, we can't really go off of that because there's other things people type like, is the earth flat? It's not the exact phrase flat earth. So you can't go off of it. Hmm. But he was just saying that uh, we, should, we should tighten down the numbers a little bit and see if we can. And I was like, dude, that would take having to do a couple of phrases you know and do like searches for those and just add those up if you really wanted to get like a more accurate number on it i was like but that would be insane yeah okay <laughs> cool man uh, but uh, yeah no it, it was interesting that is interesting thanks 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 a bunch um i i've got a couple other calls i gotta grab Unfortunately, I'd love to. I'd love to sit and no chat, problem, but I'll, I'll probably run into you after the show. So, yeah, dude, no problem. Okay, okay. Man. talk to you soon. Bye -bye. All right, let's grab three six zero area code, which happens to be up here in Washington. Three six zero, you're on with Strange World right now. Take off, you hoser. <laughs> Take off, eh? <laughs> Oh, you you listened to my uh, to my my trailer. If you guys hadn't seen the Canadian conference trailer, I used uh, "Take Off" by Bob and Doug McKenzie, which was an early '80s song, which was extremely popular here in the states. It was very very catchy. You're dating me. You're, I, I mean, you're making me feel old. I dude, I was I was listening to it as well. I thought it was hilarious, and I'm probably going to use their Christmas song. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, that would be great. I mean, yeah. That was a classic. That was on the radio. I think it made a pretty high uh, level of uh, viewership back when they didn't call it that. What was it called oh, yeah. Nielsen it, ratings it, or it was big. billboard and, and it charts, I guess. A little bit of resurgence because I think it was the Netflix show, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead, you know, the Evil Dead television series. They actually use that for one uh -huh. of their one of their little montages. They actually use the take off, and that's because those guys are from, I believe, Wisconsin originally. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, that's no. That'll be uh, that was a great promotion. I think it'll take off, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gonna uh, be actually. Awesome. I'm gonna say that. So this is Bally Music Journey, uh, Dan. So yeah. Mark knows who I am. <laughs> Nice. From the other end of the island, and then from Bali, but I'm back in in the on the other end of your island right now. So, oh, nice. Thought I'd cool. give you a ring. Well, thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Is that Oak Harbor? Then? Yeah, is that, that the is other Oak end? Harbor. Okay. Yeah. There we go. yeah. Uh huh. 
Yeah, that's again. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not it's not coincidence. I mean, there's there are people all over the place. I bet you there's a whole bunch of more flat earthers on this island. Like your sister? Oh, I think so. Um, <laughs> there's more and more. Um, the household and the uh, neighbors are hearing about it. So, yeah, yeah. nice. It takes time to soak in. It does, but yeah. I think I think we've got mm-hmm. the numbers already. Science is already starting to panic. I mean, we already have our first spin article. Where they're where they're going after us, saying to you, know, even though we weren't the ones to put out the article, this was one of their science. It's like let's do a let's do a poll on flat earthers, and you know they do the poll, and it's like oh. all of a sudden one of their guys is going, no, 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 that cannot be, yeah, you know, that cannot be the right numbers. It's it's skewed. You're not saying it the right way. It's it's going to gain traction by tomorrow morning. I guarantee it. What was the name of it? Was that Science Magazine? You said? Uh, yeah, uh, IFL Science. Uh, you can, in fact, all you, have to oh, do is type, all, you, all you have to do is go into Google right now, type in flat earth and click on news. You'll see the articles. They're already starting to, because uh, oh, okay. it's, it's a shocking little thing that says, well, 60, only 66% of young adults believe in the globe. Wow. That is huge. No, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. All you have to do is. Yeah. Well, I heard it when I was doing a little bit of high school volunteer work over here at a, a place and these high school kids, I overheard them. And one of them said, you know, the earth is flat. And I said, what did you say? The earth is flat. And he said, I said, what, are you serious? And she goes, yeah, it's like water is wet. Of course the earth is flat. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> even though, even though. So geeks here, this is where I'm getting the information. Nice. <laughs> nice. Even though geeks. The youth know it. Me, Sorry. What did you. Uh, nerds have given me crap about the water wet routine. Uh, because they say, well, you know, water isn't technically wet because they're saying, well, a signal water molecule isn't wet. I'm just going, yeah, but it's surrounded by all sorts of other water molecules. So technically, it's in the middle of wetness. So I'm going to say it's wet. Well, yeah, talk about just looking for an argument. That yeah. That's stretching it. They must yeah. be really bored with their lives. Yeah, about <laughs> one out of every 20. Well, but I speaking think. of bored, uh, so I I might go up uh, to the Canadian conference over, over Denver just because I haven't been up to Lake Louise and Banff and all that before. Oh, nice. And uh, Edmonton would be a great place to drop in. Yeah, I think you my, should. My wife should. would be down for that, too. It'll, so it'll It'll be fun. Yeah. It sounds like it, yeah. But yeah. And then if I guess if you have a really good time, we could still meet up in Denver again. And cool, you know. But Colorado's already off pro, you know. Globe, I mean uh, flat Earth. Right. Globe, oh yeah, no, so. Colorado. It's it's nothing but flatheads out there. So. All right, man. Yeah, any... you guys don't have any issues there. Yeah, good to talk to you, Mark. Hey, man. Uh, we will talk soon. Okay. Yeah, okay, if I stumble into Langley, you know, just don't forget my face. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Look for the license plate. It's a small flat. town, you know. Right. Okay, man. Yeah, I'm sure it'll get reports all over town. Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye. All right, let's jump quick, too, because we only got six minutes left. Uh, let's pick up uh, North Carolina. 980, are you there? No. No? Am I supposed to put you back Hi. on mute? Are you? Are you? Who am I? To, is is this Candy? Did you ask me? Yes. I had to call you because my daughter even realized how long it's been. She said you haven't called Mark Sargent in a really long time. I said, Yeah, you got me right. <laughs> so so Candy, is it, it's just you and me? What are we talking about? <laughs> well. The Earth is not convex. Do people realize that convex is round? I, I know, I know. But hey, look, they they made a big push and it got a little bit of a splash, and it's fine. You know, it, it's not going to hurt us. The, you know, it would have hurt us more had they been American, but they are not. They're Brazilian, so we're okay. We're not worried. I mean, I I am kind. Of, I don't know. I, I have a lot of mixed feelings about it, but none of them are really good, except I did see a lot of people on Facebook um, and a lot of YouTube channels who were just making funny videos and or like um, like music videos or like, you know, just shooting the shit entertainment. You know, they are right. all, a lot of them are talking about Flat Earth now and a lot of people on Facebook are like, oh, scientists, because 
it sounds, you know, okay, I don't know if they're scientists or not, but they say they are. So I said, you know, people have been saying to us, what do you think? You're smarter than these scientists out here. Well, I do now. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Cool. Yeah, I think a lot of flat earthers are smarter than smart scientists. Now, oh, I do the, too. If that's the level of intellect that's coming from scientists and how they do experiments, then we have problems bigger than we even thought. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you completely. Uh, I, I'd love to stay and chat with you, and maybe I'll run into you into the post show. Uh, I but unfo- I'll say hi. Oh, that's awfully nice. That's why I wait till the end. And, and if we weren't on air, I'd probably do something like, hey, what are you wearing? But, you know, we are on air, so I can't say that. Me on three glasses and an Iron Mark Sergeant shirt. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm totally, I'm totally picking up on that. All right. Hey, you, we will, we will talk soon, okay? Later. Okay, bye-bye. All right, let's pick up. Uh, this one's been waiting for a while. It might be the last. No, hopefully it's not the last one. 331, you are on with Strange World. Sorry you had to wait so long. What's up? It's okay. It's all right, Mark. I've been listening. It's been interesting. Oh, do you, so, did you want to still hey, listen? I, I, oh, go ahead. I just, no, I, I, I wanted to say something. I, I've had um, been talking to you. I, was, I brought up the uh, compressed air uh, as fuel for jet engines a while back, and, you know, we both had a little laugh over it and all that, and I know your feelings of, about the whole issue. But yeah. I was looking on online and I found these two guys called Pete and Peter. Yeah. They're, they are what I would call, they are rabid flat earthers. They aren't just your run of the mill flat earthers. These guys like, you know, wow. I mean, they, I, I made some comments on their YouTube channel and they came back at me like, you know, um, you know, I quoted some of the things that you had discussed and I'd seen on your videos and, and they were still like, you know, wondering if I was, you know, disguising as a, as a globy, they call it. And, um, so (laughs) the funny thing is that they got their start in flat earth studies, um, back in 2015, listening to one of your videos. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they, uh, I'll credit you as you know their uh, genesis into this. So, anyways, they you know they they kind of look at chemistry and and things as well as flat Earth. And the one brother is a uh, a chemist, and the other one's a psychologist, I think. And and um, but they you know they look into scientific uh, you know things like uh, just looking at air, mm-hmm. water, you know hydrogen, oxygen, things like that. Well, they were looking at um, compressed air as a as a fuel, and looking at the whole you know theory, conspiracy theory on this. And it was their opinion when they got done, you know, thinking about it that uh, yeah, compressed air could definitely, you know, um, it wouldn't be a perpetual motion machine, but it, it would be, you know, pretty close to it. And they said with the design, the way they see it with the engines, you know, they're, nobody's able to actually find out how much fuel is, is being used on the, any of these engines. Hmm. They, they skirt around it very carefully. All the, you know, hate to, I hate, have hate to do this to you. We got 20 look. seconds till the music <laughs> and then the show is <laughs> over. So do a shout okay. out. Quick. So I, I, uh, I would just, uh, you know, if anybody is interested in, in uh, further flat Earth and, and other, you know, things on Earth, uh, discoveries and, and looking into it, check out Pete and Peter okay. on YouTube. And right. uh, very, very interesting. Cool. So, right on. But, and the music uh, is music's coming in. So yeah. we'll be here next time. Same flat time, same flat channel. Thanks, Trev. Thanks, guys. We'll see ya. Hey, stay on the line, okay? Yep.
great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States.